I went through 30 papers ranging from 2013 to 2017 and found the probability of every topic for IGCS. Before moving along with the video, please hit that subscribe button if this is helping you in one way or another. We're so close to 10k subs, so hit that subscribe button and let's get back to the video. Okay, so let's start off with the measurements and units. As you can see here, we have found 54 questions in 30 papers. That simply means there's a probability of 180%. What this probability means is that you are likely to get around two questions in your MCQ paper that you're going to be doing. Now, questions that would include would be like, for example, they give you a cuboid and they give you dimensions. You're supposed to find the density. <clears throat> so you find the volume, you find the mass, you find the density. Then sometimes they could give you some string. Then you find the length of the string. Um, they could give you a vernier caliper, a micrometer screw gauge just basic measurements of lengths. They could be, you know, you could have a ruler here. They give you like a ruler and then they put an object here and they say, you know, what's the length and, you know, questions like that. These are usually the introductory questions. You know, it's around the first page uh, and you would involve measurements and units. So you are likely to get <clears throat> around uh, at least two questions on measurements and units. We move on to the next one. With the next one, we have forces and motion. So with forces and motion, as you can tell from, you know, the title of this, you could have questions on, you know, just giving a like resultant force. Basically, they give you two objects, you know, what's the resultant force? Then, you know, they could give you, um, you know, an object here. They say, okay, this is their resistance. This is the weight. You know, what happens if the object is falling? You know, what happens to the air resistance? What happens to the weight when it reaches terminal velocity? You know, questions like that, that all involves forces and motion. So when you're talking about forces and motion, you're talking about stuff like terminal velocity and, you know, so on, stuff like that, right? Um, basically, when the object moves, what happens, you know, and when it's falling down, what happens? Uh, resultant force is a bigger question here um, and questions, you know, so, stuff like that, right? Example, uh, also momentum would come under this. You have an, a wall here, maybe a ball is going through here. Um, the speed is 25 meters per second. Going at this much speed, what is the momentum? What is the force? So on and so forth. So as you can see, there's a lot of questions on this, around five questions to be expected. And I've found around 147 questions that I've found in 30 papers. Okay, so you're likely to get um, a question similar to um, that, okay? Okay, moving on to the next topic. The next topic is forces and pressure. So what's the difference between forces and motion and forces and pressure? Now, as I said, for the other topic, there was when the object is moving um, and usually it's always on around momentum. With forces and pressure, you would get, um, you know, let's say an object here, it would, uh, and they give you many objects with different surface areas and it would say, what's the pressure? So basically questions on pressure. Um, a lot of questions on pressure, where you have to use the formula force over area, questions like that, where they could ask you for the units of pressure, they could ask you for units of force, you know, basic questions like that. Uh, they could also, under forces and pressure comes the, the topic of equilibrium. So under equilibrium, we have, you know, anti-clockwise equals to clockwise. You get um, a force, you get a distance, you have to use um, moments of a force to get your answer of this. So you can see there's around three questions to be expected on this probability of around 30, 333%. So you have chances for that to come also. Also under the forces and pressure, you could get the uh, this type of forces, I would expect the elasticity to come under that. So here we have the, you know, the formula with spring constant, Kx, force equals to Kx. Using of this, what is the spring constant? Uh, my load is hung, the string extends by this much, what is the spring constant, so on and so forth. So around three questions on that. Uh, then we have forces and energy. So you can see a lot of topics with forces, um, you know, that's a, the basic building block of physics. And all of these almost hand in hand go together. Forces and energy, forces and pressure, forces and motion, they all go almost together and you can expect a lot of questions on those. Now, with forces and energy, you have kinetic energy and GPE. Basically, questions on that and, of course, work done. So those are the questions you are expected to get. Um, and you can see around two questions on those, 72 questions in 30 papers. 
So here um, they would give you maybe the height, they would give you the um, so they would give you the mass, the height, then you find GPE, then you find kinetic energy, so on and so forth. So around two questions on that. Next one is thermal effects. With thermal effects, of course, we have the you know the thermometer general temperature stuff um, that you could expect here. And uh, this is not a new topic. Um, so you know you could you could find questions on you know similar questions to this, whereby you know it's basically questions related to temperature. So you have any of those questions related to temperature. So that is what it involves. Um, also. Yeah, so basically just that, you know, factors affecting diffusion, maybe you can talk about a bit about that, like I increase the temperature, what happens to the rate or something like that. Um, so that's what comes under thermal effects, and I'm hoping you already know what comes under thermal effects, thermometer, temperature, um, you know, stuff like that, okay? So then the molecules in a object, you know, do they expand, this, that, so on, you know, we have a metal rod, how do the electrons transfer through, stuff like that, okay? So that is how, then we have, of course, mercury um, thermometers, expansion of the mercury, how it works, so on and so forth. So this um, straightforward, you can see around six questions to be expected on this, 587% um, probability on this. The next one is wave, sound waves. Here we have, of course, the reflection, refraction, diffraction type questions. Um, pretty much straightforward, you get different types of questions on reflection, refraction, and um, diffraction. And then you have to also remember the Roy Gibiv. Um, this is for dispersion, and then you can see around seven questions on this. This is usually uh, tested towards the end. Okay, so that is that. And then we have electricity. So here you would find the resistance, find the power, find the voltage, find the current. They give you a circuit. You have to find the different currents, the different voltages. They could also be theoretical questions, like we you know what type of um, uh, is this an LDR? Is this a thermistor? Is this a variable resistor? Questions like that. And you can see around six questions on that. As well, this is again usually towards the end. Moving on, we have the magnets and currents here. You could have, you know, anything related to electromagnetism. You could have the left hand rule, right hand rule, the DC motor, you know, questions on that. Then we have the step up transformers. So that would come under magnets and currents. And you can see a probability of around four questions on this. Uh, and I found around 129 questions in 30 papers. Uh, then we have electron and electronics. So what comes under here, we have the atomic structure. That means you need to know about the proton, neutron, electrons. They could ask you stuff like that. Then they could ask you about half-lives. So, you know, here would be half-lives. You can get a diagram, talk about the half-life. Questions basically like that. And this is usually towards the end of the, you know, your, your paper. Okay. Uh, and also under electronics, you could have um, questions on thermistors, circuits, even this is part of, you know, electricity, right? So any of those types of questions are to be expected. And also logic gates would come under here, okay? Then we move on to around, uh, around uh, two questions to be expected on electron and electronics. Finally, we, okay, we have two more topics. We have atoms and radioactivity. Okay, this is where actually mainly we talk about half-lives, the nuclear fission, nuclear, all of that, nuclear fusion, proton, neutron, questions on all of that. So that's the probability of 310%. So around three questions, again, usually towards the end. The last question, since there's it's a new topic, there's only two papers and I've looked for at FEB and I've looked at the specimen paper and I have found around an average of three questions that they're gonna be testing on space physics. Now here, of course, you can look at the syllabus guide at, all of these topics that I'm mentioning in the video, you can look at the syllabus guide and get more information on what you need to know. And of course, you can do topicals on these various questions so that you can get more, okay? So that would mark the probabilities. Let's go to the order of importance.